I am 10 kinds of fond of that. I had to learn new stuff for that. I had to, I had to flex my skills. That's a good thing, right? I think so. Was it an, was it an intentional flexing of the skills or was it a passive flexing of the skills? I mean, it was pretty intentional. I feel like, I feel like somewhere between learning and learning as I go was where I was at on that one. You know, that's I said, I said today in, in the notes for the last episode I put up, it's nothing worse than being a full grown adult having to learn something new. It's just, it's unbearable. Yeah. I'm learning new muscles for the length of consecutive meetings that I can go and still have formulate cogent sentences. In, in your job that you have professionally? My professional job, yes. My day job. The one that actually pays. Uh, yeah, this is not a professional job. This is an unprofessional job, <laughs> despite, our, despite our greatest efforts. This is a, this is a personal satisfaction and an enjoyment. Do you want to know, do you want to know something I've observed that, that inspired me for this episode? Yeah. I observed that several times you've, you've mentioned your, I, what's the word? Well, I, I, let me, let me just, let me set, let me set the record straight. How do you feel about binge watching Netflix? You know, the answer to this. Well, I want to hear it from your mouth. I don't want to put words in your mouth. I want to hear your version fresh. Um, in the pecking order of how I spend my time, binge, binge watching Netflix is very low. How concerned are you about other people binge watching Netflix? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's just a you thing. You're bothered by yourself binge watching Netflix. There are just too many other things to do. What about regular watching Netflix but without <laughs> the binging? Is that more acceptable? So I watched Dusty Slay. He's a stand-up comedian who has a new special on Netflix. I watched that over three nights. If that gives you any, any insights and it's an hour and five minutes and it took me three nights to watch it. Well, three parts of three days. One was were you, Saturday. Were you after. dedicated or were you just, were you doing something else at the same time? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Most of the time during the week, if I sit like most of the time, my TV's not on. It, I bet it's been on that hour and five minutes over three days was the only hour and five minutes and probably three weeks that my television's been on the Super Bowl. Uh, well, I, my television wasn't on for the Super Bowl, so I don't watch it. Uh, point is, yes, doing other things. If it's during the week when I'm watching it, odds are I'm trying to just let my mind go somewhere other than thinking about important things. Do you ever, do you ever put TV on and you get frustrated by how much the TV is asking for from you? No. So you're never watching like a like a emotionally challenging no historical documentary. <laughs> no. What about the stand up? I mean, stand up is asking things from you, right? Are you or are you just are you purely there to cut loose and have a big belly laugh? <laughs> a little bit of that, but stand up's wired for my brain to just process easily. Like I think the way comedians think even though I'm not a comedian. <laughs> what, so, what does that mean? Well, it's all deductive reasoning. It's all stand-up is. It's, it's here's a thing, here's a thing, here's a thing, boom. Well, it, it, does, seem, it does seem like saying it's all de deductive reasoning, that's what stand-up comedy is. That strikes me as deductive reasoning. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, that's in fair. fact, if you'd have asked me what deductive reasoning was, I probably couldn't have got it except for <laughs> except for you giving me a great example right there. That's I was, fair. Where would you? How do you feel about comedians as a, as a profession? Oh, very good. By the way, you feel very good about them. No, I very good to you. <laughs> The, that was that was well played. Um, I think, you know, that's a really challenging question. Um, I think it is in the same vein 
as a stripper. Oh my God, where is this going? <laughs> but the intellect is comedians are, it's mostly an acerbic wit, but are really, really smart people. So is your is the is the comparison here that these are these are um you know entertainment jobs is that the thread that you're trying tying a stripper to a comedian with Yeah and also there's a certain element of leaning into things that are maybe a little outside of social norms Sure that's fair and different degrees but yeah on one hand you have Jay Leno Correct. who doesn't make comedy that's outside of social norms, but is still pretty funny. Yeah. And then on the other end, you have, I don't know, whoever you're watching, <laughs> presumably. Well, all of them, Chappelle, Bill Burr. Uh, oh, Stand-up comedy, if it's not uncomfortable. Jay yeah, Leno. There's, there's, yeah, the Jay Leno is as bland as you can get as a comic, and somehow he man. The thing that's amazing about Jay Leno is that he manages to still be engaging, even though he like he's not offensive yeah. in really any way. So Nate Bargatze is a comedian today that's like that in a lot of ways, but just really funny. He's really, pretty, really he's pretty funny. funny. He reminds me of a guy I know. No, I mean, not a specific guy. He just makes me think like, oh, it seems yeah. like that would be a guy I would know. Yeah. So if you if you get into Nate Bargatze's background, in a lot of ways, I've lived that same life. Parents that were ultra, you know, non-denominational, ultra religious, just his background. I have a lot of parallels in the way I grew up, so I can relate to his experience. I want to know about your totem pole. That's that's the episode. Is Terry's totem pole? <laughs> Terry's totem pole, where we put, we're gonna rank, <coughs> we're gonna rank a series of vocations by. I wouldn't say objective prestige. I want to I want to rank them by Terry's prestige. So if let me first <coughs> clarify, are you are you suffocating? Is that what the copying is from? Or are you good? I'm good. All right, I'm good. you're good. Let me second clarify. On the totem pole of vocations, stripper and stand-up comic are roughly equivalent heights on the totem pole. But where, bottom, bottom being bad, I assume, right? Top is good. Sure. Okay, so bottom, are they closer to the bottom or closer to the top of the totem pole? Strip, stripper comedians or strippers and comedians. See, it's weird because I, I think they there are there are similarities and overlaps in those two professions. I legitimately think that not a, just trying to be funny, uh, but I would not, there's more prestige in being a stand up comedian, obviously. So I would say a stripper, I'm, that's not necessarily obvious. Well, and that's fair too. So they're, they're middle. Let's say that. Oh man, that's a great answer because now I get to ask you what's, what's below stripper in Terry's totem pole of respect for vocation. <laughs> like, any, give me any example below a stripper. Lots of positions in finance <laughs> in my world. And I'm being 100% I, be, I believe you. I'm not laughing at yeah. you. I'm laughing because I find it funny that you're, you're giving me a straight-faced answer. <laughs> when, describe, so... <laughs> Let's narrow the totem pole down a little bit. Is this Terry's respect? Is this how likely Terry is to do this job? Is this is this how much disdain Terry does or doesn't have for somebody in that role? Or how much d disdain Terry does or does not have picturing themselves forcing to do that, forced to do that role? All the above. All Those the above. All really, really good observations. All the above. <laughs> and, and impact, societal impact, cultural impact. Do you, do you haven't do you know anybody in finance? I know. Oh yeah. And you're you're kind of down on them. There are different different occupations in finance. Different. I'm mostly talking about money guy. So the person that came up with credit default swaps, the person who comes up with all the schemes to separate institutionally separate people from their money. 
those are people that I view very low on the total. Wait, hold on. Let me back up. So are you broadly in favor of or against financial innovation? Uh, way in favor. Just like I'm in favor of people being able to make things that they want to make. So like, financial innovation, good. Uh, glorified Ponzi scheme, correct. bad. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me get let me give you a couple of other. I have a long list of vocations, and I think we're gonna we're just gonna do rank them on the totem pole compared to stripper, various jobs in finance, <laughs> stripper, <laughs> and comedian. And so far, at bottom, various jobs in finance, Ponzi schemists. Um, that's the <laughs> lowest. Then we've got strippers above that. And then above that, we've got stand up comedians. Oh, that hits me. That's awesome. The Ponzi schemists. I'm, all, I'm just, I'm, all I'm doing today, I'm just reflecting your My true nonsense. self back on. Yeah. No, it's not, it's not nonsense. I mean, this is, there's nothing invalid about anything you're saying here. I just want to know what it is. Yeah. And I feel like getting it all out in one place kind of, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a line in the sand, stake in the ground sort of episode where we just see where you stand on these things. Yeah. All right, I'm good. So, okay, I'm, I don't even know where to start here. Uh, cat groomer. Um, above a stripper. Above a stripper, below a comedian. Yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to elaborate on why? You don't have to. Um. Yeah, just because the robots are gonna do it before too long, and that makes you that makes you lower the prestige level. Yeah, got it. All right, um, sommelier. Oh man, the good ones, like the ones that are the ones that yeah. have gone through the school and everything. So we have a place here in town called Cuvee Wine Bar, and the owner, who. So somebody we should have on like really soon. Um, he is a level five, I think is how it's called. I don't know. I'm, you know, it's one to five and either. Yeah. Five is the, the highest end. This guy's really smart and it's not just a wine. There's a lot of level of pretentiousness and that whole thing that I don't care for, but he's not just about the wine. Like he's, he understands the culture and, like the the geography a lot of things go into his knowledge of the grape and of the wine really really interesting guy he's a level five sommelier so that said i would say uh both above now like your guy at the local hilton no man i mean like the i mean the pros yeah like you're like you're describing i'm gonna say right up there with stand up <laughs> up there with stand up, but not up, eclipsing. Above stripper. Um above cat groomer. Above cat groomer. Below or to on or on par with with stand up comedian. It depends. Fair. All right, let's leave it let's leave it there. Um automotive detailer. Hmm. If you need more clarification on what I mean by the vocation, I'm happy to go forward here. I know this one. Um, just above stripper, above a stripper, below yeah. a cat groomer, below a cat groomer. So grooming cars gets you below grooming cats. Yeah. You're comfortable with that? Yeah. Okay. Um, video game programmer. It's kind of a loaded one for you. I would say, I'm sorry, but I'm not. They're at the top so far. Was that a hard choice for you? It seems like it kind of came pretty easy to put them up there. You had it came pretty easy, but you had to stick the video game part on there to to pull it back a little bit. Yeah, obviously, duh. I'm not going to give you a softball. Oh, software <laughs> developer. Where yeah. do they stand compared to a cat groomer? Yeah, don't you but, think that's kind of don't you think that don't you think it's a little fair unfair to all the cat groomers out there though for for me to just assume that that video, that any kind of programmer is somehow superior to cat groomer. I don't. I mean, it's not. Well, it's anyway. a good. It's a good point because the, the, all of these are have are person individual specific in some sure yeah some form or fashion. Do you want the next one? 
Let's do it. Oh, this is this, <laughs> this is another one where the qualifier is doing a lot of work. Classical <laughs> guitarist. Um. Oh man. See what I'm fighting off is my perception. Yeah, like, of course. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is a yoga teacher for me, a classical guitarist. Like, oh, made, so you're, you're putting other stuff on the classical guitarist? Yeah, it's. But I know a few of these guys. Wait, do they teach yoga? They're that kind of person. Yeah, but do, but do they literally teach yoga? Uh, one might. Yeah, <laughs> smokes a lot of weed uh, and and plays classical tons guitar. Of weed. Yeah, and fixes bicycles. Well, I mean that that's sort of a. Do they fix the bicycles for a living? Um, I don't know that it's intended to be a primary source of income. Uh, stri- strip away everything. This you need to you need to identify this person. Just almost above. exclusively as a classical guitarist. They don't they don't get to have a multifaceted personality. You got to distill them down to they're nothing but a classical guitarist in the same way that Kenny G is a saxophonist. Just above stripper. <laughs> behind amazing. cat behind amazing. cat cat groomers <laughs> I respect more. It's incredible. <laughs> All right, what about a what, I'm I'm trying to find somebody that can get to the top of the list, and I'm not seeing a bunch of, of good candidates here. A Zamboni driver. <laughs> um, cat groomerish. Cat groomerish. Yeah. Do you know, you know Zamboni is the brand name? I did not know that. What's the machine called then? An ice resurfacing machine. Well, that's boring. Well, Zamboni is a lot less boring, but a Zamboni is much more expensive than the uh, Olympia ice resurfacing yeah. machine or any of the other competitors. So Zamboni leads me to believe that this is an Italian developed machine. And if so, the original was probably impeccably designed. Uh, I mean, you got me. You've, you've extended, you've got me past my, that was the only factoid I had. We're not, t- it's not like we're talking about birds here where I would go 20 deep. Yeah. I got, I got Zamboni. We're going to have to let you riff, like for real, let you riff on some zoology in an episode soon. <laughs> it's, it's I so got questions. Thin. It's so thin. You're going to be so disappointed. No, I'm not. Because you got juice. Is that an Epiphone Les Paul over your left shoulder, by the no, way? No, it's an SG. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, it's cool. Uh, how about electric guitarist? Oh, stripper. <laughs> Equal right there yeah. with stripper. Yeah. What about yeah. Uh, how? Okay. Okay. How about this? Any instrument session session player. Session player. Mm-hmm. A lot of respect. Um, stand up. Stand up and above. Stand, oh, session session musician. Stand up or higher. Cool. Yeah. Those are grinders. Those are grinders that. Um, make all the things that people hear. They make those records by and large, and especially in certain genres, and they get none of the credit, and they just grind. It's their life. Huge fan of session musicians. Huge. So speaking of grinding, <clears throat> um, how do you feel about field laborers, specifically, you know, fruit pickers or vegetable pickers? Um. Tied with video game programmers. Oh man, that's a good that's a good pull. Yeah, I, and I legitimately mean that. I'm a Respect, big fan. respected work. Yeah, hard work. Hard work. Got to deal with a lot of BS and nonsense. You don't yeah. get a lot of prestige from the from society, so Terry gives you extra prestige. That seems like how it works out. Yeah, I I, I value highly people who work with their hands and that sort of thing too so well okay you brought it there how about a nail salon tech Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, this somehow came to my mind on that this this is not an ai generated list this is i know made, this list is made exclusively my, by me and i don't know how i came up with nail tech well it, 
you're playing the game very well too because you found that logical you're finding the logical inconsistencies like okay you think that about the field laborer so let's find the equivalent um, there's an there's actual science to that where you where you ask these marginal questions and I, i'm not applying the science but when you're doing when you're doing a statistical survey you get things that are farther apart and then you increasingly get closer and closer together and the idea is it's basically like a this or that over and over and over again and you can zero in in much more uh in a much more narrow and specific way into somebody's preferences or or like whatever it is you're trying to to study with the survey i should go study that but i, I haven't studied it. i studied it just enough to know that it exists and then i didn't apply it here i'm just winging it how many things are there like that in your life i have a bunch of those i'd say that's most of my life yeah yeah it's, when we have people on here who are dedicated professionals that's the time that i'm most <laughs> out of my element might be too strong but that's the time that i'm most uh I, I like i have to find common ground that is that has nothing to do with what they've dedicated their life to and how i how i live my life not yeah. not even how but the the, the day-to-day what yeah but you know how you know how you have an occupation and you have all the things that you have in your life and have got what, right. what it's taken together. So you right. know the experiences that you have in that sphere that the, the people that we have on that are experts in one thing or another, like you still have that same mentality. Like you can, you know what they do. What are the things that you're interested in in your sphere that they might be interested in their sphere? Well, and I think I, th I think that you the, do that. That's the actual point here, as I'm trying to get to. <laughs> like, I care about your totem pole, <laughs> but I also I also want to I want to I want to explore uh, where does prestige come from, and mm. what do the people, regardless of where they are on the totem pole, have in common with each other? I I, I don't want to do a stripper episode, but like, if needed, we could do a stripper episode, and I would have all kinds of like social opinions about strippers and jobs where you're paid to be somebody's friend and make them feel not lonely you know there's a whole like there's a bunch of those kind of jobs and they're not all stripper and they're not all like x-rated jobs either there's, yeah. there's tons of them pharmaceutical reps that's like one of your favorite go-to's it's so weird that you just said that i was thinking uh i write a lot like bits like comedic bits just to write them and they're in notebooks or in yeah. different things and the other day, I didn't write it down, but I was evaluating evaluating that same topic. Like we frown on strippers, but pharmaceutical sales rep, is it really any different as a function? In, in the application in a lot of senses, they hire specific demographics intentionally for certain reasons. Is that really any different? And of course it is, but like it's degrees. So I'm, I'm with you. I, I would love to do, uh, I would love to talk about sex work and not because I have an interest in it or, you know, it's not in my element. I don't understand it, but is it as bad as all the connotations that we associate with it? I mean, strip clubs as work, when you think about what's the work environment, what are your coworkers and customers like? What's your management like? Fair. Some of those things are not great. Yeah. Um, I think it may be different depending on where you are. You know, if you're in a nice, clean, well, well, probably not well lit. If you're in a nice, clean <laughs> well and lit. ups upscale strip club in whatever the whatever the you know whatever the big leagues of stripping are, that's totally different than the than the corrugated metal buildings of West Virginia. I've been to a strip club two times in my life. And the first experience was not pleasant. It was in what you just explained, basically. A, a corrugated metal building in the hills. Yeah, really, really dicey place. I was a young guy, really young. Both, both times I was very young. And the first experience, I'll just say there was a pregnant woman dancing. And that was for me like... I, I, even at a young age, like there was no frat house humor in that for me. It was disgusting. Like not that the person, the individual was disgusting, but that like Just that, that circumstance happened. 
there was a there was a sliver of humanity that had escaped my <laughs> mentality that I was exposed to at a young age. I never you, wanted to go back. Do you ever go back and thank your lucky stars that you had that that little awakening? That you it got to know yourself a little bit in that environment. <laughs> it never would have been my thing. I'm always thinking about the backstory. That's why porn's never been my thing. Right, Not right. The, but the, I mean, the backstory, the backstory has to be like you, you, you had an aha moment there yeah. that you never would have been able to have otherwise. Yeah. I don't want to talk about strippers anymore, but I don't have my, I had the rest of my list doesn't matter now. The only, the only other stuff I had on my list that's any good. Um, we got field labor. <laughs> Like I, I want to know, I want to know your take on streamers. Oh, bottom, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely the bottom. Honestly, this whole this whole thing was just to get that face out of you. The whole yeah. the whole episode was to see <laughs> if I could get you to make that face. But you know what's weird? No, I'm re- you're a, a podcaster. Yeah. Well. Th- well. Yeah. The irony of that, but the the reaction that I just had and I've never, yeah. I don't even know what a streamer does. Right. I know what they do. I've never seen a streamer's content ever. Not any of it. I've seen I- clips of Twitter. <laughs> I've seen clips on Twitter of some of these YouTube people pranking people like in yeah. very tasteless ways. Is that streamer? Is that a streamer? Oh, I, a streamer just means that you, you, make video content in medium long form typically live and get paid for it that's about all there is to it yeah i sound like such an old fogey with that last comment yeah but isn't that isn't that (laughs) this there's a there's the there's the thing and then then there's the thing that my aunt's uncle's parents and grandparents have read about the thing right yeah you your your take on streamers is similar to my like my oh. grandparents take on oh. video games, right? Well, they'll be like, "Hey, Russ, you like video games? I saw this thing about and some, you know, some I don't know. They read it in like the newspaper, and and they're like repeating back the newspaper thing about the game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, same here. I have this. Isn't that the way most people do everything? Though you only have no choice. There's only yeah. 24 hours in the day, and I'm not going right. to spend all of it learning right. what a streamer is. Okay, so in the last couple of minutes here, let's establish. Hold on, real least... quick. All right. Do you know who Mr. Beast is? Oh, yeah, I know the name. Okay, go on. I wish I didn't, but I do. <laughs> I just know he has a chocolate bar, and he should, <laughs> he should just walk into the ocean. Although he's, you know, go. No, we're, I, did, I didn't want to distract you. I mean, I wanted to interrupt you, but I didn't want to completely sidetrack us. I want to talk recklessly about the the new school content creators. I want I want to shame them because I don't understand it, and because I don't understand it, it has to be bad and mindless. That's what I want to talk about. Now, is this is this a new is this new for you as of this conversation, or did you already knew this was how you felt? I knew this is how I felt because this is how all of humanity is. I don't understand said thing, so I'm going to crap on it, and I'm guilty too. I think I, I think, need you to turn. I need you to turn this around on me and find the things that I don't understand and and take a dump on. I feel like it's very one sided. Where I try and call you out for that, but I don't feel like I'm getting it the other direction. I feel there, like there, you, there's got to be stuff. I feel like you have a very rational and pragmatic approach to a lot of those a lot of those things. I mean, that's probably true. But there, just yeah. because just because I I happen to have this particular little sliver where I am essentially forced I'm I'm using by being mostly logical and mostly objective about lots of things that causes me to be you know slightly further down the spectrum of what appears as open mindedness about things like streamers but like that's not true I mean part of why I'm part of why I'm more open minded to streamers is because I know more about streamers than you do because I have a 6 year old and a and a 4 year old right so these these kids watch streamers I try to keep them from it, but I'm like, Hey, if they're, if their friends are doing it and if they want to do it, I want to know what this is. So then I go and learn a little bit more about it. And then I, I dabble, I dabble just a tiny little bit. And I got that <laughs> tiny little dabble about it. And that little dabble, that little dabble takes me really, 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 really far. And I go and I'm like, even if I wanted to be a knowledge sponge, I agree with you. I don't want to learn everything about streamers. Like I don't want to, I don't want to be able to give you a detailed explanation of streaming as an industry. And that I, I'm, I just know that some we need to find someone who can 
who can insult me to my face in the same way that I routinely insult you to your face about your, <laughs> that's what we need to find. I don't think you need insulted. I need yeah. my mind opened. Challenge me, Terry. Challenge me. I'll challenge you on ideas. I won't challenge you on your judgment. Like I think everybody has you, you, be judgy. <laughs> be, be judgy, Terry yeah. Miller. Be the judgy. Terry Miller story. <laughs> be judgy. Hyphen hyphen. No, you don't. You we, don't want to be judgy though. You you yeah, specifically sometimes, sometimes have said that you don't want to be judgy. Yeah. But I'm not going to lie. Like you make, I make, we all make intellectual Everybody. estimations based on what someone does occupationally. Yeah, I, that's clearly true. Us. And nobody's right or wrong on what their filter is. You know, the content of, the, of an individual's filter on how they judge what someone does occupationally. I don't think you can say someone's right or wrong. Um, because it's an object or it's a subjective process, but we all judge. You like people, right? I do. Interesting yeah, so, I mean, people. So, well, yeah, but I mean, everybody's got something interesting going on. So part For of it sure. is, part of it is figure out how to be, how to get over your judgment and find the, well, like find the people that you would be the, the whatever your category of least interesting would be, find them then learn what you can about them to make them like find that connection connect like make it so that you have the thing in common and whether it's a 15 minute conversation or whether it's seeing them in an elevator or whatever and then imagine what it would be like if, if every person every random person you saw on the street like could you have that 15 minutes worth of meaty conversation with them or not that's the big question i think i, I think i unfairly um I think I unfairly judge someone as being in or make determinations about the level of interesting that someone is based on if they can tell me about things that I have no knowledge hmm. and that's not fair. Um, yeah. It's certainly biased towards a very particular set of traits and skills. Yeah. That's what, but it's why you like me. Cause I could just say random stuff all day and you'd be like, Oh my God, Russ, how did I not know that one superficial factoid you just pulled out about the Arctic turn? Have I talked about the Arctic turn before? No, but you've given me bird. Like, I love that stuff though. That, because that's something I'll never come across. I love things that I'll <laughs> never come across in my daily life Yeah, or, or even think about needing to come across and here, you know, it's like turf science guy, turf I, science guy. Never, ever would I have ever needed to know or wanted to know how grass grows, but he started talking about it and I was in. I, you, that's, you know, I love that. Do you know any bug pros? Ooh, that would be fun. No, I don't. I have a pragmatic concern here. Like, I don't want, I don't want the random uh, new guy whose job is described as a, as a tech, technician who comes in and like sprinkles some, some stuff around my house. Yeah. I want the guy who has like deep termite knowledge. Yeah. And like he thinks like a termite yes. or she. And yes. I want the, I want the person that can give me the whys behind the termite treatment and that yes. can answer the follow-up questions. But I, th I need a combination of the expertise and I need enough of a I need enough of a good sport to where I can ask the questions to some levels of depth and not get to where it you know I got I'm going to ask I'm going to ask the follow-ups, you know. It's like, oh, you have to have this system or that system for the termites. And I'm like, but why? I don't want that to be like, shut up. I'm the expert. Yeah. I want that to be like, well, here's the reasons why. You know, and if there's no answer, I want the answer to be, you know, some degree of, man, I mean, we should go find that out. So where are, where is termite, pest exterminator, where is he on your, or she on your totem pole? I'm glad you asked. My totem pole is a flat line. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Your totem pole is constructed just like everybody else. It's an impossible exercise. I can't do it. <clears throat> I can't, I can't make, I have no, any criteria I give is going to be, is going to be internally inconsistent. Like if For I sure. say, if I say, if I say termite person is okay, well, fine. I'll say this. I just, cause I just did it. Termite expert is above fresh off the street termite tech higher. There you go. There's the, there's the hierarchy. 
random person who drives in a termite truck and writes me a quote for sprinkling granules compared to person who can explain the breeding and eating habits of a termite. There's a, there's a freaking massive hierarchy right there that I care a lot about. So you know what you just did? You just explained why this segment originated because that's why that's how I judge those things too. Because of termites? The same the same logic that you just used for guy who just sprays the stuff to kill the thing versus guy who knows all about the thing and why the stuff kills the thing. That's the same thing. That's the same way that I go about it. And that's how that's how that the interesting part, the thing that I'm interested in, it's why I've asked our surgeon, guest, and friend, and I've asked a couple of people about the prestige of jobs yeah. because they do that. So expert about everything about the termite is going <laughs> to haze and belittle guy who's just spraying stuff coming off the street. And that's Tim Dawson's every- surgeon. Tim Dawson's surgeon gave us a fantastic little bit of insight. He sure I, had no idea, I had no idea it was going to be coming. He goes, there's a lot of people that aren't very good at this. For sure. Who are yeah. doing it anyway. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, that's why it's the third leading cause of death in this country. Surgery? Medical error, error generally. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of people who can take te- whatever. That's you need to bring knowledge. me. You need to bring me a citation for that. I'm not taking that at face value. I will bring me a citation, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs>